I have with me here probably the best affordable tablet that you can currently get. We've seen a lot of the Tiger T618 powered Android 11 or Android 10 tablets. This one here from Techlast is their T40 Pro. And it has eight gigabytes of RAM with that Unisoc T618 chip. It's got LTE support, so dual SIM with LTE band 20, Bluetooth 5. It also has GPS, a hardware compass with that GPS, FM radio, and you can place calls, texts on this. So quite a lot is on offer here. The screen is a 10.4 inch screen with a 2000 by 1200 resolution. It's quite bright. There are four speakers and it has a 7000 milliamp hour battery. This to me is right now the best of the affordable tablets you can get with Android 11 that it ships with. Included inside our box, you'll find a user manual. We have a charger, which is a type C one and then a type C to type C cable. There's also this optional extra that Tech Class do sell for it, which is a cover case for it. So it has this that flips right back so you can use it as a stand. And then the back, just a standard kind of TPU style case. It does fit the tablet perfectly, of course, coming from the manufacturer. For an affordable tablet, this one really has a nice build to it. So it's got this nice alloy on the back of it. Very smooth finish. And I love the fact that it's got rounded, nice curved edges all along the edges of it. 13 megapixel camera right here. There is a strip of plastic at the top. That's for the Bluetooth 5.0, the LTE band 20 supporting 4G antennas, and then wireless AC that it has on board with it. So it does also have a hardware compass with GPS built into it, and the build very good for this range. It's even better, the build quality, than this here, which is the Audio Cube iPlay 40 Pro. Same spec but this one definitely steps it up with the build quality that you have with it. Now it does weigh 480 grams, the thickness is 9.5 millimeters. And when you take a look at the front of it here, bezels, they're not bad, okay. They're reasonably slim for these kind of tablets. They're not super chunky what we used to see before. So eight megapixel camera here at the front, and this is another area where it's superior to other models is it does have an ambient light sensor built within it. So it is nice and thin, about 9.5 millimeters. So we have two speakers here at the top and then our SIM tray. So the SIM tray takes micro SD cards. If you give up on that micro SD card, you can then run dual nano SIMs here. So 4G LTE band 20 as mentioned, support is there and it supports a lot of popular bands, which is great. I do have the European version here. Then down the bottom, we have another two speakers and I'll give you a sample of just how they sound. Then on the left side, we've got our Type-C port. As mentioned, charge time is about two hours for the 7,000 milliamp hour battery. And what I think is a little reset button inside there, volume up and down and power buttons are made out of metal. So the build quality is excellent. Love those rounded corners. The fact that they've gone with alloy on the back of this. And when you give it a bit of flex, it doesn't flex. There's no creaks. It doesn't make any noises. It does not feel cheap at all. In fact, it feels really like a more expensive or mid-range tablet, the build quality that Teclas has gone with, yet at the affordable category. Now we have an excellent screen in this tablet from Teclas. That is 10.4 inches. The resolution is 2000 by 1200. It is an IPS panel. Now I don't have any problems with the touch response or accuracy. It is really good. And it is a bright screen too. If I just get out of that and go into the settings here and turn it right up, it's gonna completely overpower my camera. It is bright, okay? 540 nits is the peak whites that I'm measuring, and that is excellent. So we don't normally see that, but now recently, a lot of these brands are starting to use much better panels, and it's paying off, because we really want a great screen and a tablet, of course. So if you go into our display settings, there's a few little options that we do have in here. So your typical eye comfort mode, dark theme, colors and contrast. So we can go and tweak that white balance to your own preference there, which is great. 
Now, what I do like to see is this adaptive brightness. It sometimes is very handy. Now, it does work quite well. It will set that brightness automatically so you don't have to go and keep changing it. If it's too bright in certain scenarios, well, it's going to be all automatic, of course. It's a pretty standard thing, but most affordable tablets wouldn't actually have that. There is also this backlight power saving. Now, this is supposed to save quite a bit of battery as it helps to just tone down on the brightness there in certain scenarios just to save a bit of battery life so good to see that options there now what about the rom then so it is an android 11 rom that we are running stock android there's just one criticism with this rom from me the performance is very good but i just wish with the launcher at least i could get rid of this here and have it maybe at the bottom so you're not unable to do that the fix of course is using something like nova launcher or apex launcher if that is still around you can use that and then, of course, you do have all your apps there in an app drawer. Performance is good. And you'll see here, too, FM radio. So we've got FM radio, GPS, hardware compass, LTE there, Bluetooth 5. It does offer quite a bit, this chipset. And that's why we're still seeing in 2022 now brands going with the uh, Unisoc Tiger T618. And then the multitasking on this, it's quite smooth, especially going along to your recent apps here. No real noticeable lag here if you're not running anything too heavy, that is, of course. Now, if you've got a game going on in the background, then it might bog things down a little bit. Free available RAM, you get quite a bit on first boot, more than uh, the current four that I've got because I've got a few apps open there. But normally it's around about six or so you get. It does have eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of eMMC 5.1 storage. So I get onto some benchmarks here. Let's take a look first at what we get with free available space. So you're looking at approximately 114, 115 gigabytes. And of course, you can expand upon that with a micro SD card. Now, the Antutu score here shows that this is low end. OK, so it is a 236,000 points. Now, it does actually perform reasonably well, this chip. Now, we used to get before some MediaTek chips, some of the other ones that, uh, well, older generation ones, octa-cores that wouldn't even perform as good as this or didn't actually offer as many options as we've got with this particular chipset. I think it's fine just using it now for quite a few days. It's definitely a chipset that general kind of use is pretty good. Now, it's not going to be a gaming monster, and I'll get onto the gaming performance later on. So there is GPS built into this, which is really good. Now, it's not the greatest GPS chipset. It will take a long time to get that accuracy down. At the moment here, I had six meters. The longer you wait, the better it's slowly eventually going to get. Now, it does have a hardware compass built into this, which is normally missing. A lot of tablets and even sometimes flagship ones will have GPS, but no compass. So that's great to see that it's even on board with this. And then here we go, wireless speeds, wireless AC. Um, not amazing, so it is able to achieve relatively normal kind of speeds for this particular chipset around 145, 50 maximum. And in the area downstairs, still getting reasonably good speeds, but I like to see at least over 100. So it's a little bit slower there, but it's held up well and it didn't cut out either the wireless, probably because they've got that plastic along the top where the antennas are located. So that's why they've gone with that, of course. So eMMC 5.1 spec storage, these speeds are pretty good here considering the spec of this tablet. They're not too bad at all. So it's not going to be holding up this system. The storage, the bottleneck is, of course, the chipset itself. And now then, okay, Wide Vine already pointed out that before. So yes, level three cert only. So Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, all of that stuff in standard definition. It is the definite con of this device. Battery life, 7,000 milliamp hour battery. It goes for this fixed test for almost 11 hours, which is a good score. So you can squeeze out just over 10 hours on this with battery life. I still had 17% left when I took this screenshot. So the battery life, good, okay? There's a lot of positives with a tablet like this. It's just not a powerful tablet and not a huge beast of a thing, but good battery life. Ebooks and PDF files, how are they on this screen? So, not bad. I do think they look quite good. Fully laminated, nice screen to look at. And the PDF file speed, this is a very large file that I like to test out, and I've been testing this one for years. It isn't exactly a speed demon if you need to really skip ahead a lot of different pages. 
but it does an okay job there. Now, of course, if you zoom in a little bit, that text does look quite sharp and I'm happy reading that, not a problem. Let's take a look at eBooks. Same story with Google Books here that the eBooks are just fine. They look good and I can happily read them with this. Now you've got, of course, the eye care mode. You can invert this to be a black background, white text if you want to do so. And then you can also flip it around. It does have, of course, the accelerometer in there. It's going to sense that. So you can use it in portrait mode like so for reading eBooks, which this tablet's going to be pretty good at. It's not too heavy and I will be happy to hold this for hours on end reading with this. But it's not as light as some of those dedicated ebook readers, of course. Those are much lighter, but then this can do a lot more than those. And a sample of our front facing camera. So this one's 8 megapixels and it can shoot 720p, so HD video with this front facing camera. The rear one, similar kind of quality to this. Your mobile phone will definitely take better video and photos, so I wouldn't really bother too much with it. But it's not that bad I mean it's it's okay at least it's 30 frames per second here what you're listening to is the built-in microphone with the t40 pro from tech last and then gaming performance on it well I've managed to get six kills here in PUBG I have the ultra frame rate option which seems well smooth enough for this spec of tablet and I've got really no problems at all looking around I've experienced no serious lag there's been a couple of definite frame dips and I'll just get into this car Oh, no, I won't. And looking down the scope, when you move around, um, it seems good, okay? No real lag. So for light titles like this, the T618 Octa-Core is going to game just fine with the Mali G52 graphics, I think it is. And then the thermals on it, well, it gets a little warm just around this area here, but this chipset doesn't really have enough power to generate enough heat to have a problem or an issue. And because it's all metal, it's dissipating that heat a lot better, I think, than the plastic build of the likes of, say, the iPlay 40 Pro. All right, so it does have a lot going for it over my old best affordable tablet for 2021 was the Aldo Cube iPlay 40 Pro. Now, this model here has a superior build quality to it. It's got the metal unibody on it. When you give it a flex, there's no creaks or anything. That Auto Cube's all plastic. This certainly feels so much better in hand. We have slightly louder speakers. It has 800 milliamp hours more of battery capacity versus the iPlay 40 Pro. It has a hardware compass built in, which the other model does not. And then the storage, random reads and writes are a lot faster. That's four reasons right there. However, the storage capacity is half of what you get with the iPlay 40 Pro, which is 256 gigabytes. This one's 128. So we do have dual LTE support, really good to see, band 20. You can place voice calls, text messages, GPS, hardware compass, and even FM radios built into it. So you get a lot from this chip from that Tiger 618. Performance wise, for general tabling needs, it's very good. The UI is smooth, it's fluid, it's stock Android 11. It will probably never get Android 12 update. Tech class don't normally do that. They will probably have a new model by the time they would get around to actually doing that. They just pump out a new model. That's how it is. So cons here with the Tech class T40 Pro. No 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There is no Widevine level one cert. So Netflix sadly in standard definition, which is a real shame considering this is such a nice screen that it does have. So there we go, that's the full story of TechClast's T40 Pro. This is now my pick as the best affordable Android 11 tablet for 2022.